Hello everyone! Welcome back to The Worst Album Ever Made, a show where I'm on a quest to find out what is the worst album ever made. And today is a very special episode, because today is our five year anniversary here on YouTube. So I thought I would do something special for our anniversary, and uh, I'm going to do one of the most requested videos uh, from you guys in the comment section. I am covering Ween's The Pod. Now, I've always been very confused about this suggestion because I have always thought Ween was good. That's like saying, hey, can you do the next Tyler the Creator album? That just seems odd to me. Granted, I've only heard two Ween songs until I started doing this deep dive, and those are from Spongebob and Tony Hawk, but still, I thought Ween was universally loved. Then I, then I heard the pod. <laughs> Since I really did not know much about Ween before I started, I had to ask myself this question over and over again. Who is Ween? Ween is a very experimental rock band made by Dean Ween and Gene Ween, no relation, focused on making music from a plethora of styles, from punk to country. They started in 1984 and eventually extended their band, which still tours occasionally to this day. Now since I was doing a big deep dive of Ween, I went and listened to several of Ween's other albums before I listened to the pod. I bought and listened to Quebec, I love that song Argus, Mwah. I love it a lot. I also listened to 12 Golden Country Greats, which was very funny, and then I listened to the pod, and I was shocked and intrigued, so I thought I would get a guest listener to listen along with me, and I asked the talents of the wonderful, wonderful musician Frank Javsey to come on live stream and listen to it with me in one long take. Okay, so you uh, have told me that you know your ween. Uh, yeah, I said I'm a real ween-er, yeah, but honestly, I've only ever heard Ocean Man, and I think like a couple of times my friends were like, hey, let's listen to ween, and I'm like, okay, but I've never listened to the Pod 1991 full album. All right, first song off this album right here is Strap On That Jammy Pack. In the liner notes of said album, in the time this album was completed, we filled up 3,600 hours of tape and inhaled five cans of Scotchgard. That's not true. Um, I'm not saying Ween couldn't have been doing any kind of drugs on this album. They totally could. But uh, it's generally uh, accepted by uh, Ween fans that that is a bold-faced lie, and they're trying to put you in the headspace of this is made by people who were high off fumes. Which, if you listen to this first track, you would likely believe that. Cause that's exactly what I did before I did any more research. I thought, absolutely, they are high off their fucking rocker. <laughs> Also, before we get into any more of the song, you have to learn about this specific phrase that is used a lot by Ween fans and Ween themselves, which is the term brown. Brown is what it sounds like when something is so bad it's good, or if something is made bad on purpose. When Ween first started their band, they were trying to be obnoxious as possible. And this is a song that kind of sounds like that. So I think this is the brownest song off this album, completely starting it off. And I think it is a very good opener because it sets your expectations extremely low, just like The Residents and Meet The Residents. You give you, you, it gives you the worst stuff first and then you are completely expecting nothing of quality, and they will shatter that later. Trust me, they will. Strap On That Jimmy Pack is, is my least favorite song, so nowhere to go but up. Uh, I'm giving it two stars. Okay. Now that jammy pack is over, it can't hurt us anymore. It's time to start having a lot more fun. We are going to be talking about the next track. It is Dr. Rock. A 
complete tonal shift from the last song. This is a fast-paced, hard-hitting rock song about Dr. Rock. Who is he? I don't know, but you better give him a house call, fucker. Me and Frank Javsey, we love this song. It is a bop and a half. If you have time, I would listen to Dr. Rock, and I would also very much recommend the live version as well. It is very nice. Next up is another freaking banger. It is Frank. This album is very food-centric. There is a lot of food references in this album, because Ween absolutely adores food. Uh, this song is going to be the start of all of that food talk, because this introduces one of Ween's favorite dishes that is going to be brought up a lot on this album. It is the pork roll egg and cheese sandwich. This sandwich is mentioned so frequently, I'm going to keep a running total of how many times it is said on this album. I love this song. It sounds like a fun, lazy Saturday afternoon. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I recommend Frank too. I, I'm, I'm giving this one a four star as well. It's just as good as Dr. Rock. Not the same at all but it's like really fun. Next song is Sorry Charlie. With the past three songs, the lyrics kind of took a back seat from all of the, uh, all the instrumentals. They're, they're ones that are like really pulling the weight off the last three songs. Um, but this one, the lyrics are like the best part of the entire song and the story behind the song is like the really coolest thing about it. The problem is, you can't really understand it. You can kind of get hints, but it's like a back fat situation where you are just left scratching your head until someone explains it to you. Okay, so this song is uh, from Diener. Uh, he revealed that this song is about a guy he knew when he used to work at a gas station. The guy used to be on the Florida University's football team, and one thing led to another, and eventually he had to drop out. And then he started selling weed in front of Dean's store. Uh, it's very laid back, just like Frank, but it's, it's all about how this guy has just become such a loser, and he just keeps bothering Dean, and he's just like, get the freak out of here. Now, I like how the filter gives the song its own unique sound, but I'm just like, I wish I could hear him more. So it did knock it down a, a peg, but I still really like it, so I'm gonna just give it a three. Next up is The Stallion, part one. The Stallion part one is a 1991 shit post that could have been released in 2016 and would have fit right in. So this is Ween. Uh, making a song about uh, a horse they knew. Ween used to live on a horse farm and the stallion is a tribute to one of those horses. Uh, this song will eventually have five different parts to it, so I know a lot of longtime Ween fans will absolutely adore this song. But right now, it kind of sounds like an inside joke that none of us will ever really be in on. Um, I'm giving it a three. It's a pretty brown song, but I, I respect it. I respect the stallion, because if I don't respect the stallion, he will beat me to death with his hooves. <laughs> oh yeah, it is time to talk about one of my favorite songs, if not my favorite song off the album. It is Polo Asado. I would like two Polo Asado tacos with one beef chimichanga. This song was written by Giner, and it is about the time he worked at Taco Loco, and it's about his least favorite customer that would always come in and make his life a living hell. Uh, the guy would always come in, he worked very close by, so he would always be there for lunch or dinner, 
and he would have the most complicated, needlessly complicated orders. You put some hot sauce on there for me? No, he's inside the taco, no, no, inside. He would ask questions he knew the answers to. He would always ask for very specific things to be done in a very specific way. And he would do it pretty much on purpose. If not on purpose, then he is just a dense motherfucker. What is the polo asada? It's chicken. Well, okay, what is the carne asada? It's the beef. Uh, it, it, it seems so uncanny, the whole situation, but also at the same time is so absolutely relatable. Polo Asado gets a freaking five from me. Next song is Right to the Ways and the Rules of the World. This is definitely like Van with a unicorn wizard on the side of it. Uh, this song sounds like a wonderful song to put in the background of a D&D campaign, but it is actually all about the dangers of, of religion and how people should should uh, not just go with what people tell them what they should believe. Instead, what they should believe is whatever they find is good for the individual. But having a government that is all about religion and forcing that on other people is probably not good for developing children. Yeah, that's cute. This is I very with them. this is very wholesome. Yeah, it feels like a good time. Just doing inhalants with your friends, being dumb on purpose. <laughs> The song starts like extremely serious uh, because it is a very ex a serious topic they're talking about, but then uh, they just start laughing and giggling and uh, they the whole thing just goes awry. <laughs> song is pretty good uh, because of the cutting up and stuff. It does have some charm to it, but uh, I I'm going to give it a three and a half stars. It's not an amazing song, but it's still pretty great. Yes. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, hip hop music. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is pretty much like a sister song to the last song. This is Captain Fantasy. Like when I hear this song, I can just imagine myself just running through a forest with with a big ol' war hammer just on my back, just running about to just smash a thing. That's exactly the vibe I get from Captain Fantasy. It is mystical rock to its finest. It is high energy. It's a lot of fun. I, I, I really can't complain too much about Captain Fantasy because it's just a, a nice little, little, little ditty about, uh, just about being all up in the fantasy genre. I'm gonna give it three and a half stars. We're gonna get a little sexy. It's demon sweat. This song is a very sexy kind of song. It's a very slow melancholy song about losing a lover. But man, does it just crank up into high gear at the end with that mega guitar solo going like <laughs> Like, it's it's an intense song and it's one you, you, you can have relations to if you're into that sort of thing. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm giving it a three, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put the lighting back to where it was. Did anyone order the bad shit insane? Yeah, right here. Uh, next song is called Molly. I, 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 I got nothing. I got nothing. I have no fucking clue what this song is about. It is absurdist as a hell. I know Molly's a drug, but I don't know if like the term Molly was around in 1991. And like, I looked it up and I feel like I'm gonna get put on a list, but I, I really couldn't get you a definitive answer, so if you know, let me know in the comments. Cause if, if it is like a term, I assume this song is, is about the drug, but if it's not, 
then this is about just some person. I love that. It's like my washing machine can make that same sound. There's a lot of pitch shifted vocals, a lot of stunted vocals, lots of starts and stops so you don't know where it begins or ends. Like if you listen to this on repeat, it just sounds like the song is never going to end. Can you taste my the waste? Oh, it, it's, it's still Molly. I see like a lot of women with like weird shag wigs, like yeah. bu bucket heads just going like this. Very interpretive down. This is just the sound of what rats think. It, it is a brown song. It's a brown song in every sense of the word. I am going to give Molly a three, and I really thought about giving it lower, but I did enjoy my time listening to Molly, even though I didn't like listening to Molly. I, I would say it's just so interesting, I have to give it a pretty fair score. It's so unique. Next up is Can You Taste the Waste? To be honest, I don't have a lot to say about this specific song. Uh, it's a very straightforward rock song that has Can you taste the waste? Repeated over and over again. It's pretty short. Um, it's inoffensive, but also not as interesting as everything else we've heard so far. I would say this is going to get a two and a half star from me. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just kind of simple. Next up is the trippy, existential song. It is Don't Sweat It. See, I like this one. This is fun. Like, this is really good spacing out music. If they're on inhalants, I could imagine doing inhalants to this. You're just like, yeah. A very trippy, muddy little song. Sounds like you're walking through milk. Uh, this song is all about death. And you probably shouldn't worry about death. Uh, because uh, you can't control it. It's going to happen. We're all going to die eventually. So you probably should just make the most of it. It sounds like he's terrified of dying, but he's telling us to not worry about it. Almost like he's telling us through experience, it's not a fun time. And then uh, at the end, there are these just high-pitched squeals and squeaks like when he's trying to talk and they freaking hurt my ears so much. So I had to dock at some points off that, but it's still getting a three from me. Next up is Awesome Sound. I love that bass line. Oh yeah, five stars, five stars. Five stars. Next up is the music you hear on the elevator to hell. Next up is Laura. This is like the type of music you put on at a party when you want everyone to go home. <laughs> the song sounds like the drunken ramblings of a robot. And it takes a while to get it started. It, it's such a slug pace but it rewards you if you stick with it. When that beat finally kicks in and it starts going, and then you get that chorus, it's pretty damn awesome. Like that chorus is so cool and so fun. I just wish the rest of the song was like that. Their vocals are very distinct. Yeah, it, this, I can tell these are the people who made Ocean Man. As a guy who's only listened to Ween's Ocean Man, I'm getting a lot of Ocean Man yeah. vibes from this. <laughs> it's bad, but it's freaking cool at the same time. So I'm giving Laura a two and a half, just cause it's just such a, such a slow start, but that chorus, that chorus, man, oh. Next song is Boing. Like 
it's not a lot. There's not a lot to Boing. It's a pretty short song. It's a song that I, I assume is about sex. It has very pitched down vocals, and I think it's supposed to try to make the listener uncomfortable. But it, it, I'm getting it a two and a half. It's, it's not like Jammy Pack. It's not offensive. It's just there. And, it, and I, uh, there are just more songs that are shining out more than Boing. Next song is Mononucleosis. So if you remember earlier in this video, I told you that Ween uh, did not uh, inhale any, any Scotch Guard. Uh, what they did have, however, is a bad case of mononucleosis. And that's the reason why this album sounds so sluggish, is because they had a terrible, terrible disease and they kept recording. Kudos on you guys, kudos for powering through it, but oh my god. This song is, is talking all about their experience. They talked about having to stay all day in their sweaty mucus covered bed. Close your eyes, you can just imagine this, this terrible situation on this little apartment at the farm and just being like, uh. Ween on an interview with MTV like forever ago, they actually said that like, this is one of the best things to happen to Ween because it forced them to be more creative. They couldn't make the same music as they were making before on their first album. They had to be more creative. I'm giving Mononucleosis four and a half stars. Four and a half freaking stars. I'm not gonna lie, this one, this next song surprised the hell out of me. Oh my dear, uh, I'm falling in love. This song sounds something you would hear more in a Kimya Dawson record than a Ween album. On this album where like everything has like a bunch of like hard guitar and then you have this song that's so stripped back, it's such a nice change of pace. I thought it was sweet, I think it's nice, I'm giving it four stars. I hope you metalheads are still awake, cause uh, guess what? This next song is very, very rock and roll forward. It is Sketches of Winkle. <laughs> Pork roll egg and cheese is not the only repeating theme of this album. I have neglected to tell you about Rip Van Winkle is all throughout this album as well. Uh, the old folklore of this guy who just drinks some bad alcohol and then wakes up 20 years later and his wife is dead, his dog is gone, and now he realizes he's in the future and he's very confused. Well, Ween is a huge fan of Rip Van Winkle so much that this song is all about him. Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> is he the guy with the mustache? This song is about you're in love with this person and this person over here and you really don't really are, are on the same wavelength of the things you are into. So you got your boyfriend over here, boyfriend over here loves sports and then you have uh, me over here where I'm really really into drawing Rip Van Winkle. They're obviously not gonna have anything to talk about, you know? So that's what this song's pretty much about. Like, you're you're in love with somebody, you're dating somebody, you, you've, been, you've been inside them a couple of times, but you guys have nothing to talk about. And that is kind of like the vibe of this song. Another fantastic surprise coming off this album. It is, it is so freaking awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm giving Sketches of Wrinkle a four as well. Uh, great song. All right, guys, we've been having too much fun, so it's time to really reel it on back because it's now time to talk about Alone. Okay, so Alone, is all about painful isolation and at the end of the day you're even if you hang out with a whole bunch of friends you're gonna be by yourself you're gonna be alone there is like a lot of filters just going on with the music in general on this track it all sounds underwater still it fits very well with like the theme i think because what's more isolating than drowning to death 
you it, with everything else being faded out, it's almost like the the singer is this guy's inner monologue, and the world itself is just kind of fading away until it's like nothing. So I'm gonna give Alone a three stars as well. I know I've been giving a lot of threes, but like they're good. They're good songs. A three is good for me. Next song is Moving Away. Moving Away sounds like a spoof of, of old blues power ballads. Um, talking about like, oh my baby, she is moving away. Ay, ay, ay. And it's rough. It's it's pretty pretty rough. It's, it's so brown and like the voice gets like so pitched up, you get Vocaloid flashbacks. Like moving away is like, is like almost nothing. If you, I don't think you would lose a lot if moving away was not on this album. Um, I'm actually gonna tie it with the first one. I'm gonna give it a two. Okay, so <laughs> next song is She Fucks Me. Yeah, this is definitely music to drink cough syrup to. <laughs> when I first heard it, I was like, pretty confused and I didn't know if I liked it or not and the more I heard it and the more I heard it it has become one of my favorites I listen to this one very often it's 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 about a true experience most likely about this person who this guy met and they started dating and they have sex. That's pretty much the whole song. Just the way it's delivered and the way the song is made, it really gives you a lot of context to how the singer feels without having to tell you that this is a terrible relationship. Like, the voice is so tired, it's so worn, it's so just over it and I, I love that. You might have already noticed that you can hear the famous sandwich pork roll egg and cheese repeated in your right channel. That is true. In this song it is repeated 35 freaking times. This one's like that guy at a party is like where's my hook and I'm like I don't know you. <laughs> oh yeah. I give She Fucks Me a five star. I love this song to death, and I'm glad I've listened to it. It has enriched my life for the better. Alright, since the last song we repeated pork roll egg and cheese 35 times, why not we just give this freaking sandwich its own song already? And that's exactly what Ween did, because this song is called Pork Roll Egg and Cheese. Oh my god, that, that's, that's nice. So, this song, I feel like is like the perfect song to wrap up the album. Um, it is a song that is just, just so many things that have to do with this album is all in one little sweet little song. Yeah, this one you could definitely put in like an indie teen movie. The chorus is so nice. The whole, the whole song just sounds so sweet, which is probably why there's a lot of fan covers of this song right here. Now with this song right here, the total uh, number for Pork Roll Egg and Cheese is astounding. 47 times in this album it is Pork Roll Egg and Cheese on a Kaiser Bun specifically. That is, that is insane. That's an insane number of times to talk about a sandwich. With all this talk of Pork Roll Egg and Cheese on a Kaiser Bun, I thought I would try it myself. I went out, it took forever, but I found pork roll, and uh, we fried up an egg, we, we got the buns, we put it all together, and we ate it, and what can I say? It's good, it's a good sandwich. It's a jam, it's a bob, and I think you should listen to it. Listen to this song. If you're doing anything after this, stop what you're doing, I want you to listen to pork roll, egg, and cheese, uh, and, and freaking go to town on some guava juice, make the sandwich, and eat it. That's what I did, that's what you should do. Alright, here we are. The final song off the pod is The Stallion Part 2. This song sounds like the after credit scene. Like, Pork Roll, Leg and Cheese really probably should have ended the album. Like, even in Pork Roll, Leg and Cheese, they even say, that's the end. And then there's silence. And then... Bitch, did you forget about the stallion? Yeah. 
The stallion is back and he is ridiculous as ever. Cause man oh man, they just freaking sing the alphabet in this song. Like, the whole song is just as ridiculous as the first one. I mean, it's almost to the T the same. Uh, but there's several s parts that I do like. Um, and the main thing I like is when the stallion meets Diener and uh, they have a conversation. They break the fourth wall with each other. But overall, it's pretty much the same. It's the, it's the same kind of song. So part one and part two could, could have been all just part one, but I think it's a very funny callback. It, all, it, it does kind of bring it full circle. It, it is pretty funny. I'm going to give it a three and a half stars. We are now done with the pod. What a ride. What an absolutely insane ride the pod was. It... I, I can see why all of you suggested it because it, it, it it's wild. It's a wild album. But like Ween is so unabashedly creative and like the fact that they were working in the conditions they were working in when they made the pod, it's nothing short of a miracle that the whole thing was able to get made. And Ween would continue to evolve and they would keep doing these crazy little things. That was but, fun. Like they said it was like a brown murky album, but I yeah. felt like there was little diamonds in there. Like yeah, every like, so often there was like a diamond and then it was like back to murkiness. But then like you could see the potential in yeah. them as like an artist. Yeah, it had its highs, it had its lows, but that's what I think makes a good album is going up and down, being mm -hmm. able to experience the good and the bad and the ugly and the pretty and the <laughs> bland and the normal and the black, the white, the gray is the rainbow colors. Um, Yeah, I'll add, I'll add something. Uh, My name is Frank Jeff C. You might not know of me, but just Google me and listen to my music, please. Special thanks to Frank Javsey for joining me on this amazing little journey we had together. And thank you for watching to the end. And as your reward, um, you get nothing. 